Oh boy. Did we just go live? Did it happen? Let me know if you are here. Let me know if we just went live. I need to know. I need to know if this is working. If we are here, let me know. Oh boy. Oh, I think we're there. I think we're there. Oh, the audio is there. The video is there. We are live for our 2023 PLL Draft Party. Welcome to the party. This is an exciting night where we are going to get to see some of the best players in college lacrosse get drafted. We are going to see some sweet dudes getting on some sweet teams or uh, not so sweet team. If you're into one of those guys... But yes, 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 I see you are all here. Jackson's checking in for the archers. Uh, well, you're commenting on the Atlas, but checking in for the archers, right? Who else do we got here? Yeah, Atlas, when you have the first and the third picks of the draft, come on now. Come on. You got to do something right. Who do I got for states, dude? I don't even know. I am sorry to hear that. Anomaly. So this is this is this is a sad part of, of myself is uh, reading some of your clever names. Sometimes I have to process, make sure I'm reading something appropriate. But secondly, I just can't say it correctly. So yes, um, I have no idea, my man. I have not been paying attention to the states. I've been too busy building sweet graphics and sweet audio clips. You know how it is. That's what you're here for. Like this sound here, you're gonna hear it a lot tonight. The pick is in. Oh, isn't that money? Come on now. Come on. Give it up. There you go. Bowed up. I see it, Jackson. I see it. I'm actually going shefty on us all tonight. I've got the phones going so I can get the picks live before they even come out. Maybe Andy Towers will drop me a, uh, a quick little hint on who he's going with here tonight. Probably not, but, you know, I'll give it a shot. Chris Cotter is up on the TV. The boys are back on set in the student desk fashion yet again for 2023. I will say I tried to dress up my set a little bit here tonight. You know, it's a fancy night. We should do some, uh, some, some love for the PLL draft, right? Look a little sharper than most. Ski the East, what's good, my friend? How are you this evening? If you are here, let me know where you're all from. Where are you all from? Where are you at right now? Because it's good to know. Where does everyone come from? Where do they hail? Across the bottom of the screen, you will see our ticker going, letting us know who's going to be picking where in this draft tonight. As we mentioned, Atlas has got the extra pick in that first round, so they got to be feeling pretty good about that, right? Uh, that's the wrong keyboard. I got two computers going tonight. I'm trying to do the best I can. Trying to keep up with the keep up trying to make sure this is as legit as possible for you right now they're showing some sam hanley highlights does hanley go number one does hanley become the number one pick or this thomas feller this mcconvey that they keep talking about from virginia they often think of mcconvey as potentially number one going to atlas there was a little bit of there's a little bit of a hubbub and thought that that may indeed happen we got new york in the house South Carolina, wait, what was that? Jackson, this is probably a little bit before you. Petey Pablo, that was, was that North Carolina or South Carolina? Come on and raise up. Oh, they're showing the big, beautiful draft board. What's up, Mr. Bull coming in? Chaos. You would like the chaos from York, Pennsylvania. I believe York is in the uh, D3 tournament, right? Didn't I see York was in? I should look at that a little bit closer. We're all about D3 heroes over here, which there is a chance. I'm not going to say a big one, but there is a chance. A gentleman by the name of Cross Ferreira. That's right. Cross Ferreira, which I do like that name. There's a chance that old Cross will show up today in... Sorry, I keep thinking my camera's here. You're up there. Uh, on draft day. I wouldn't say it's a big ch uh, opportunity, but there's a chance. Cross plays for... Uh, Salisbury. He is an attackman down at Salisbury. We're looking for our D3 heroes getting drafted here today. Who knows? Maybe one comes, maybe one doesn't. 
All right, we'll give you a quick rundown. There are four rounds tonight, eight picks per round. In the first round, you have four minutes per pick. Rounds two through four, you get two minutes per pick. So that gets a little, little trickier, a little faster. Tonight, the teams with the most picks are going to be Atlas and the Chaos. And then Cannons, what do they have? Cannons just have that, whoa, two picks tonight? Is that how that rolls? Is that how that goes? I'm keeping track of everything here tonight, although what that means is master of, every, wait, jack of all trades, master of none, something like that. Something like that. Who else is out there in the crowd tonight? Who else has joined us? Paul Rabel standing there looking. Oh, well, they just got right into it, I think. Atlas have, oh, the Atlas have selected Adler with the number one pick. Woo, they are going fast. I wasn't even ready. Hold on. We got to update our draft ticker. We've got Adler going number one. Gavin Adler coming to us from Cornell. Gavin Adler is number one. What's up, Vincent? What's up, Jeffrey? Gavin Adler just went number one to the Atlas. Interesting pick. This was definitely one that was on the top of a lot of people's boards. I wasn't so sold based upon the size of the man, but you know, it's not the size of the man in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the other man. Don't forget that. Gavin Adler coming to us from Cornell. What does that do, like 5'8 and like two pounds? He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a short little dude, but I got nothing wrong with, with small dudes. As long as you're going to win. Well, it looks like we're, we're interviewing Coach Pressler. So there's a good reminder for us all. Coach Pressler took over the Bulls this year. He did. He did indeed. Um, he used to be at Bryant, but I don't know if he was somewhere else before Bryant. Well, I know before Bryant he was at Duke. But just recently, was he still at Bryant? Who knows that answer? Well, since the Atlas are now off the clock, let's jump over to the Redwoods. Let's start thinking about the Redwoods pick here. So I don't know that I thought Adler was number one. I guess maybe I thought that was a potential. So what do you do if you're a Redwoods guy right now? You're standing here looking at this team and you know you need defensive help. You know you need some long poles. You know you need somebody from that perspective. Do you go with a long pole here thinking that uh, Atlas may go back to back poles? Could they get crazy and go back to back long poles? It's possible. The Atlas have a pretty stacked team. Thank you, Thomas. Dressed up for the occasion. Yeah, absolutely. From the bench, man, I am here to be of the people. So do the Redwoods, in fact, go with offense? To me, what they really need is more long poles than anything. You see, they need long poles. They need defending between the boxes because they don't have an LSM behind Sexton. And their short stick D mids, they just lost Patrick Harbison to retirement. So, you know, maybe this makes sense. Maybe it makes sense to go with a pole. Will Bowen, that's the one that I had slated earlier on. Or do you go with this generational talent, Sam Hanley? We are going to find out soon, I do hope. But yes, for the bench, I did the best I could. I found a jacket, I threw it on, and I said yes. That does the trick. I, uh, I was trying to figure out my wardrobe all day, all week, close to a month, and uh, this is the best I could come up with. So I hope you appreciate it all tonight. It's, it's, it's time. We need to treat this like it's the real deal. We are getting live reactions. I don't know if you all had a chance to see that. It's probably out there on the old Twitter machine uh, of Gavin Adler getting picked and his team's mobbing him. They also just got to watch themselves. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. Now I got people texting me. Unfortunately, it's not Andy Towers. I was waiting for Andy Towers to send me a message. Even though we don't know each other, I thought for sure he'd let me know who he's, who he's feeling like picking. Um, but no. Paul Smith says Gavin Adler was the right pick. I don't know. Do you all think Adler was number one? Thomas, they definitely, they definitely need more polls. But do you go poll first when you've got this generational talent out there? What's up, Ty? How are you doing, buddy? How are we doing? It's been a long time. I've, I haven't done cards in a while. I actually haven't picked up cards in a while. I almost did. The PLL just recently did that 50% off, that BOGO deal. 
I really thought about doing it, but I've probably got way too many that I figured it's time to slow down. Oh, the Redwoods are on the clock. Oh, geez, I didn't even say pick is in last time, did I? Hold on. Hold on. Let's go back. Let's go back. The pick is in. Um, Owen Grant! Owen Grant! What? They're going for the Owen Grant sliding up the board. Not a bad pick. If you're going to go pole, not a bad pick. They say Owen Grant is one of those guys that can play in transition. He could be that mean, tough, I'm going after the ball, and I'm going to take it up the field, and I'm going to shove it in the other team's goal if I want to from a new market Ontario it is interesting what's happening with the the, the Redwoods are they going <laughs> Owen Grant who he is a long pole from uh, Delaware Delaware so you will see him in action actually tomorrow night I think it's like is he like 81 or 91 something like that let me see what they say about Owen Grant Owen Grant on Adam Lamb sorry I keep thinking the camera's not here my bad Adam Lamberti from first class lax had Owen Grant going a little bit. Oh, he had him going in round two. Didn't even say anything about him. I will say that uh, the fans uh, put Owen Grant, I believe, a little bit higher. I think, uh, oh, I left my notepad upstairs. Unbelievable. Um, I think they had him going at like seven or eight. Let's see what our fan, our fan, our favorite man, Dan Aristia, had to say. Dan had Owen Grant going at seven to the chaos. He, I know he really felt like this was a real chaos dude. What's interesting is the Redwoods are starting to model themselves after the chaos a little bit. Yeah, Thomas, you live in Delaware and you forgot the homie? What's up, man? What's up? Yeah, I would say not a lot of people probably expected Owen Grant to go this high, although I think there were people that were high on Owen Grant. According to Dan Arisa, his Owen Grant, he felt like, was the third best player. He had Will Bowen going at, really, he thought Will Bowen was the first one, which I don't necessarily disagree with that. I thought Will Bowen was a, was a dog as well. Um, and then he had Gavin Adler at two. What is going on? Oh, we got, uh, sorry. Nat was standing up from behind his student desk, and I wasn't quite sure what that was all about. Seems as though we want to see his kicks because he's got these really cool shoes that I think he wore last year, if I'm not mistaken. He wore the same Redwoods shoes last year. Um, they really want to see him again. But yeah, Owen Grant. Owen Grant was a 2022 second team All-American. We'll see. We'll see what he looks like tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, uh, it is Delaware and Marist in the first round. Actually, I shouldn't even say first round. The play-in game for the, uh, for the playoffs for uh, college lacrosse. That starts tomorrow is the play-in game. I believe Saturday is the rest of the slate. And Little Kahuna, apparently on Twitter, agrees with this idea. Owen Grant should be the dog. We'll see. We are going to find out. So with that, let's go back to the Atlas. So the Atlas are on the clock. So this draft, everyone talked about, there is probably four really great polls in the first round. Some people said Sam Hanley is a generational talent. What's interesting now is that we have two polls going off the board. Will the Atlas, will the Atlas go with uh, one of these offensive players? Frankly, I, I kind of like a Tucker Durkovec a lot. I think Sam Hanley definitely has his place. Uh, what's unique about Sam Hanley is that you could potentially take some pressure off of a Romar Dennis. You could take some pressure off of Docs Aiken. Um, yeah, it's really interesting that, that Hanley's still on the board. You still have two really great polls, and really, frankly, you could say more than two. You got Will Bowen. Brett Maker, uh, Maycar, I think those were really meant to be the, the top four poles. Those two are still left. But, man, where do, where's Atlas going? Where do you guys think Atlas is going at this point? Do you think they expected Owen Grant to go? I don't think a whole lot of people expected Owen Grant. But I will say, in that we trust. And last year, I don't think anybody really expected Logan Wisnowskis' going number one pick overall. He did. So, you know, maybe they know what's going on more than we do. 
But I see Mr. Rabel back on the stage. He is making all the picks for the team, so apparently they whispered in his ear. And now the pick is in. Is that Maycar? Brett Maycar. The pick is Brett Maycar. We should have uh, we should have done our draft ticker. You guys didn't even yell at me. You should have said, hey, fix the draft ticker. So Redwoods went with Owen Grant. These polls are flying off the board. If you are one of these teams that was later in this draft, uh, later in this round, you thought, ah, we were going to get one of these long poles. No problem. You're getting a little nervous right now. Why did I just put the water dogs on the What? I put the water dogs, you know what? I put the water dogs on the clock. I don't think I put anybody else on the clock, did I? Shame, shame, shame on me. So right now we've got to put Chrome on the clock. What was I doing? Come on now. Oh, the boys are giving them some love. Maycar all the way up at three. That's an interesting one because I don't know did anybody have Maycar all the way up at three? Overall, ah, uh, five? Okay. So, overall, Owen Grant is, not Owen Grant, Will Bowen. What's going on with Will Bowen? He's sliding right now. Um, Maycar, looks like Dan Aresia had Maycar going... Uh, oh, uh, ninth pick to the Cannons. That's where he thought he would go. And our dude, first class lax, Adam Lamberti, had Maycar going four to Chrome. So he was only one off of that pick. This is an interesting one because I think Carcaterra had him further down the board. I don't know exactly where he was at. Um, but he wasn't up this high from what I remember. I do remember the mock draft with the, with the fans, which they clearly know nothing. The PLL put on a mock draft for the fans inside the discord group and uh yeah he did not go this high just didn't happen all right there we go let's take a look at the chrome since chrome are on the clock what is it that we think the chrome are going to need in this draft based upon this list you're kind of looking at it and you're saying okay nick turn nick turn's going to be out on military duty nick turn from what it sounds like is at least gone for the first few weeks sounds like he's probably going to come back in maybe late summer months but then there's a chance that they may lose him again at the end it sounds like coach sudan said no we're, we're not going to focus on replacing my homeboy here um we're still going to have him he's still going to come back but the focus isn't to strictly replace nick turn I hear what you're saying, Mr. Sudan, but Nick Turn was a huge part of your offense last year. A huge part. Uh, happened to win Rookie of the Year. That's how important he kind of was to that team and really to the whole league. Caden, Sam Hanley is still out there, and Atlas has picked twice and picked two deep holes. He's not going, he's not going to the Atlas unless he drops all the way out of the first round. Highly unlikely. <sighs> Highly unlikely. So, yeah, we've got Nick Turn in here, and we got Shooters with Range. I think that was one of the areas that was a challenge for, for Chrome this last year is that I, this is the problem. I should not have brought two mice to the party. I think they were one of the worst teams when it came to um, two-point shooting was, was the Chrome. I think they did really well in almost every other category. It was really this two-point shooting that became a little bit of an issue for them. So, shooters with range. Yeah, I know, Caden. People weren't expecting this. He's there at four for Chrome if they want because I also thought that they needed an offensive LSM. Basically, they need to generate more offense. If you take a look at the screen here, you basically are seeing... Um, I, I see Mr. Bull, Hanley the Chaos. I don't think he's dropping all the way to seven. I just don't see it. Uh, the little crowns, if you see a crown on the screen, that indicates a top 50 player. So... Every year, the PLL ranks their top 50 guys. And I should say, the PLL ranks, as in the players, from what I understand, the players do a vote, and they decide who the top 50 are. If they have a crown next to their name, they're a top 50 dude, a top 50 dog. So that's what they've got the crowns on for. You Here you see more crowns on the defensive side of the ball. But really, Chrome in, in total really isn't too shabby, right? Chrome's... Chrome's got a, a decent roster, but not a great roster. And if Nick Turn's gone, your defense has a few more crowns. 
Maybe you go offense. The thing about long stick midi was I wasn't quite sure. I, Eli Salama's good. He's fine. Better on the defensive side. Nick Grill is probably a, a, a guy that's out of position. I mean, that's a nice way of saying he's probably large for a long stick midi. Um, it, you wouldn't put me at LSM. Let's just put it that way. Um, Nick Grill's a thousand times better than I am. FYI. But, um, yeah, it wouldn't hurt to have a offensive long stick midi in this equation. But they do need offense, and Mr. Rabel is back on the podium. So let's say the pick is in. And going to Chrome is the big dog himself, Sam Hanley, the fourth pick out of the University of Penn. This generational talent goes to play with Logan Wisnowskis. If you're a Chrome fan, you're probably a bigger fan in this moment right now. This is huge. You probably didn't think Sam Hanley was going to be coming down to you. You just got a giant load of a human being that will be sprinting down the field, running over defenses. I mean, you got the twin towers between Logan Wisnowskis and now Sam Hanley. He's from Portland, Oregon. Not a hotbed, but Penn Quakers, a hotbed. Kind of, sort of. Penn out of the tournament, though. They lost this year. So they will not be going anywhere. I am, I'm sorry, Mr. Bull. Gone. Gone. Caden, I'm sorry, man. I don't make the picks for you. A Atlas felt like they had offense. They felt like they had offense. Their defense is aging on the Atlas side. Let's take Chrome off the clock. Let's go back to our draft chick ticker. Put our little Sam Hanley friend in there since he is not going to be going to any of your teams. Kevin, what did you miss? Kevin, my friend, you have missed everything. Everything. First pick, Gavin Adler to the Atlas. Redwoods came in and selected Owen Grant. A little bit of a surprise. Then another surprise, Atlas come with Brett Makar. We just had Chrome select Sam Hanley. At the fourth pick, we are now on to the fifth pick, which means the archers are on the clock. You wanted At you wanted Atlas to take Hanley, huh? I'm kind of surprised. I thought I thought Atlas would go with one of the. I, I really thought they would go with one of the offensive players. You got two top three picks. Uh, if I take a look at historically, top three picks, they've been really good. If you look back. Three years, we had number one was Grant Ament from Penn State, perennial stud. Costa Beal was number two, perennial stud. I don't know who number three was. I don't think it was anything crazy. Last year, two years ago, you had Teat was one, Sowers was two, and um, JT Giles Harris was three. If Sowers and, and Giles Harris were, were not injured that year, they would have been amazing. And this last year, we had Wisnowskis. We had Logan Wisnowskis. Who do we have else? Who was two? Oh, uh, Chris Gray. And I don't remember who three was. Who was three? Who was three? Was it Matt? No. No, it was Arden Cohen. Arden Cohen was three. That's right. Arden Cohen, because the Redwoods had the third pick last year. The Redwoods need to stop picking so high up. Face-off guys are all still here. Lorenzo, you are just on at time, my friend. Yeah, Romar, Costabile, you got Docs Aiken still, so you're all right. Um, Kevin, you'll see it right here. It's scrolling. Gavin Adler was first pick. Owen Grant was our second pick. And Atlas went with Brett Makar for the third pick. And then, of course, fourth was Sam Hanley. Lorenzo, all of the face-off guys are still intact, but I will tell you what, more deep holes are going off the board than I think people expected right away. One, two, three, first three picks, poll, poll, poll. Means we're probably going to be looking at uh, Tucker Dordovec is here. Um, oddly enough, I did not know my volume was on on that computer. Tucker Dordovec is still on the board. Who else do we have? We've got Matt Campbell. We've got, if you're looking for a uh, short stick D mid, we got the Peyton Razanka. We still have Will Bowen out there. Uh, still, probably what some people would have argued the first or second best poll in this draft is supposedly still out there, if you believe he is the second or uh, first best poll. Let's jump to the archers as they are on the board. Coach Bates is on the board, as he told us all before. He watches some random 
lacrosse games. As he uh, mentioned, he was watching Jacksonville versus Bellarmine the other day. Uh, I, I don't think that was such a big deal. I don't think he really meant that in a negative way. He was just saying, look, I don't watch just the main games on the TV. I watch all the games on the TV. So there's them apples. What do you got for me? Uh, trainer. The, the archers. Who do the archers need? Well, hold on. Let's get to, before we get to trainer, uh, let's talk about the archers. So archers lost a lot. They lost a lot this year. When you lose both Holman and Manny Will Manny at the same time, they were like 30 points each. That's a lot of offense to have to recreate. I know Mac O'Keefe came in and we're doing the Mac and, and Grant show again. We're reuniting the Penn State offense together. Once again, it's going to be happy family. But I still think you need a lot more offense. They've got to do something on the offensive side of the ball. Now, is it with this pick? I don't know. Defensively? So here's the situation defensively. Of course, LSM, you lost Ratcliffe. Uh, Ratliff, not Cliff. Ratliff retired last year. So he's out of the equation. I think Jared Connors does you some good there. I think Jared Connors has tried to fill in. I think he tried to prove himself. Reese Eddy is, is there as kind of a backup. John Robbins, great dude that they found in later rounds. I, LSM, I think you're okay. Close defense. You only got three dudes right now listed on the roster for close defense in Hasek Jeffrey. And I, I never know how to say that. Everyone says, like, McMahon. I feel like it should be, like, McMahon. Mc, McMahon. I don't really know how to say that name. So, I, I don't know. I could see a case for Tucker Durdevec, who's still there right now. I could absolutely see it. I could see a case for Will Bowen because he's still there right now and you need defense. I don't think you can go wrong as an archer right now with this pick. I really don't think you could. Um, archer's got to take Bowen. I want to see underdogs, underdogs, yes. So we're all hoping for Cross Ferreira. That's the name we're looking for, Salisbury Attackman. We need a D3 guy going in this draft. Um, yeah, I, I think Tucker, I, you just lost so much offense. And, and the two main dudes you lost on offense, we're top 50 guys. You got to replace them with a top 50 guy. I will say that I think Tucker Dordovec is a sleeper in this draft. I don't think people are as high on him as they should be. I think he is probably a top three pick. I'm just going out on a limb there right now. Here's my sound bite that I'm going to play later. I think everyone is sleeping on Tucker Dordovec. He is a top three lacrosse player. At the end of this season, you will see that I was right. And if this is wrong, you'll never see this clip again. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yes, you do need a Fogo, but I don't think you need to jump at Fogo yet. I think there's like four Fogos in this draft. So I think there's a chance to pick up a Fogo at a later point in time. I don't think it has to be in this moment. But Mr. Rabel is up, ready to make the pick. So I will play the sound and then I will read the name. The Archers select Sisselberg. Okay. Mike Sisselberger, the Missile Burger himself. The first Fogo is off the board. You called it, Ty. You called it. Let's just rip the Band-Aid off. Mike Sisselberger, a Lehigh pick, a product coming out of Lehigh, showing up at number five, going to the Archers. Ain't that something? From Center Valley, PA, represent Pennsylvania lacrosse. Let's add the old missile burger right here. How about that? I was not so sure. I thought we would be looking at a I thought we'd be looking at a face-off guy later. I thought maybe eighth pick would probably be one of the earliest picks we'd see it. But no, they said we need this face-off guy. Oh, TD Erland was one of the early picks a couple years back too. Speaking of face-off guys, so Sisselberger, one of the uh, the, fa the earliest picked face-off guys since T.D. Erlin. Yes, Sisselberger to the Archers. Let's get the Archers off the clock. Who's on the clock now? The Whips are on the clock. This is a lock for Tucker Durdevec. If you are paying attention, Tucker Durdevec, this is a lock. Um, which I absolutely hate based upon the soundbite I tried to record a few seconds ago. Yeah, I did not expect to see uh, Sisselberger come off this early, but look, if he's that good, he is absolutely worth it for a team that has struggled uh, with 
a team. Let's, let's look at their roster. For an Archers team that has struggled, Ignacio came in, or Ignacio, Ignacio came in, and he just hasn't been the guy. They were literally last. It was like 38% in face-offs. If Sisselberger wins you just a tiny bit more, it gives you more opportunities. Now, I will argue they lost a lot, right? They lost a lot offensively, so getting the ball in your stick doesn't equate to goals. Lacrosse with a Nash. What's up? Baptiste is, is ridiculous. I mean, you, you can't just make up a, a Baptiste. Uh, uh, trainers. Yo, trainer. Hold up. Hold up. Let me see. Let me see. My, my, my work has been all done by. Shout out to Dan. Oh, I keep thinking the camera's here. Dan Aresia. Shout out to Dan Aresia for doing awesome work. I love his stuff. I am utilizing a lot of his stuff here tonight. And Adam Lamberti from uh, from First Class Lax. I've pulled a bunch of their stuff. Um, that name sounds familiar. Look, I try to tell you. I'm not going to know all these people's names. I'm just, I'm going to be real with you. I, I try. I try to be real. I try to be real. Um, I don't see... I don't see train. I thought I saw trainer's name before, but I don't know why I saw it. I don't see it on my list of names. Trainer, 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 trainer. I had seen it before, but I don't know why. What's up? What's in the chat? You guys are blowing up the chat. Thank you for coming out tonight. I appreciate you coming out tonight. Let's have some fun. We're already five picks down. Oh, Sisselberger was a 67.8% career face-off, guys. How about wrestlers being great face-off guys, huh? How about them being great face-off guys? Um, nice. Playing for two teams. Oh, to what? Yo, whips. Did, we, did I show the board what the whips need? Did I show the board? Let's go back to the whips. What are the whips need? Good question. So first and foremost, health. So... When I say health, like, let's be honest. The whips are kind of old. Uh, this team that we know have been here for a while, and it's funny because I've got Jay Carlson in the player pool. I wasn't quite sure what to say about Jay Carlson. I was like, why is he in the player pool? Well, we just found out like a day or two ago. It's because he was retiring. Um, they've got a lot of players that have been around for some time. So offensively, I, they're going to need some offensive midfielders. They need some people that can score from the midfield. They feel like they're, they're losing some steam there. They've got pretty much Brad Smith, Rambo, and Zeddy Ballgame. Zed Williams are their top 50 caliber players on the offensive side. I really could see some more help there. Uh, Will Manny came in. Oh, I should have put, I don't know why I didn't put the crown on Will Manny. Come on now. Uh, Will Manny should have a crown. So I think their attack's going to be in a good place, but it really comes down to offensive midfielder so i think this is where tucker dervek goes pll president and co-founder paul rabel is up there the pick is in and there it is tucker dervek it just had to happen it just made a ton of sense unfortunately he plays into their scheme i think pretty well i hate this pick because i kind of wanted to cheer for him and now i can't i mean good for you whip snakes you're ugh. Good for you. Remember, I'm trying to I'm 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 trying to remember to put the, these names in as they happen. Tucker, whoop, Dordivec. Where's he from? Another Portland, Oregon. Two Portland, Oregon, Portland, Oregon individuals showing up in the first round. You know we haven't mentioned it all tonight. Nice nonsense, which I have been trying to keep to a minimum up to this point. But when your lips don't work, nonsense. Yeah, no brainer. I agree. I agree. No brainer on the whips pick there. We are down to the eighth pick or the seventh pick, seventh pick, right? What are we down to? Who's up? Chaos are on the clock. There we go. Chaos with the seventh pick of the PLL draft select. I don't know yet. We don't have it yet. Let's make sure that uh, Coach Towers, who liked two of my tweets today, two tweets Coach Towers liked. That's that's got to be something, right? That's got to be something. Uh, oh, I'm getting I'm getting advice in my text machine here. Braden says they need more attackers. I'm not sure which team that was for Braden, but I agree with you. Definitely, every team needs a little bit of something more. We need to score more goals. Let's just double check. I want to make sure. 
I want to make sure. No, I did not. Hmm. Weirdly, I did not get a response um, from Andy Towers, Coach Towers, yet. <laughs> Ew, whip I didn't say that. That's written in here. I just read it out loud. Uh, whip sticks are chaos. Where are we at? Chaos now. Let's jump over to the chaos roster and see what they need. Although Chaos seem like a team, they're pretty full of themselves, right? They, they like the way they do things. I mean that in a positive way. They like the way they do things. They don't really care for outsiders. You can see that by the fact that they lost four dudes but did not replenish anybody from the player pool. They did not replenish anybody from any other teams. They like to keep their nucleus together. I did hear in, in the car ride... Um, I think it was outside the box podcast was, was talking when uh, there was a media day last week for these coaches. And the one big thing for Mac O'Keefe, which is probably one or two of their biggest losses, Matt Reese being the other one, but Mac O'Keefe wanted the opportunity to start and it just wasn't going to happen. Josh Burns there on attack. Josh Burns, their lefty attackman. They wanted an opportunity to, or Mac wanted an opportunity to start somewhere. So, he said, hey, I'm going to move on. I'm going to go to the Archers. That's just what it is. So he moved on, but uh, I think I'm getting more updates. Ah, the Archers. The Archers needed. The Archers did need more offense, Braden. I agree with that. Um, yeah, and, <laughs> Josh, you're invested in this. I love it. Um, so Mac O'Keefe gone. You lose some offense. But then yeah, they also lost Matt Reese, which is a very interesting one. Matt Reese wanted to go somewhere else. I'm not really sure why. He was a pretty good pull for this team. But you still have Jack Rowlett. You still have Jared Newman. Brett Kennedy was a top pick last year. Certix probably more of a project to keep going. Um, on the pole side of things, you got Costa Beals. He's getting kind of up there in age. Troy Ray. I could see a long stick midi. I could see, I could see a Bowen pick here. I really could see a Bowen. That's not a bad call, Mr. Bull. I could see a Bowen happening at, at, at this level. Because they do need some some more long poles, but they man they need a dude on offense. So McConvey, I just saw pop up. Yep, Campbell or McConvey, I could see one of those guys showing up here. McConvey definitely more so from the box perspective. This team loves to play a box style. So McConvey, he was the number one pick apparently in the NLL, which is the other professional lacrosse league. The PLL apparently does not support very well, or there's argumentation. You go to Lax Twitter. It's all over the place. Um, there's 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 rifts between indoor lacrosse and, and outdoor field and box. Whatever. I don't pay attention to the NLL very much. Um, it's cool. It's fun to watch. I just I just like outdoor better. I'm sorry. I like field lacrosse. So yeah, maybe maybe we see a, a Campbell or McCombie. Uh, McCombie I think makes the most sense. So I'm gonna say McCombie or a Bowen in this scenario. I feel good about knowing some lacrosse players all the way down to the seventh pick. I did my homework just so I can help you navigate through the first seven picks. After this, we're just going to be enjoying the show together. We're just going to enjoy the show together, I think. Oh, chaos. You thinking a midfielder? <laughs> I appreciate you, Bull. Uh, chaos, you're thinking a midfielder. What midfielder would be out there? Uh, Campbell's, Campbell, oh, they, they call mid Campbell a midfielder. I thought Campbell was an attackman. I thought he was an attackman. Jack Myers, I don't think makes sense yet. Um, okay, I didn't realize Campbell was a, was a midi. Yeah? Kyle Long also out there from Maryland if you're looking at midfield. But what's their attack look like? So Josh Byrne, Chris Cloutier, Chase Frazier, Kevin Lindley, Joe Arrestaresis. I, I don't know. Just their style of play, and you still got a dog out there like McConvey. I just, it feels good. It feels good. But I could make a case for, for, uh, for Bowen. I really could. Looks like Mr. Rabel is back up on the stage. Let's get ourselves back to the right screen, and the pick is in. Will Bowen. Will Bowen of Georgetown is going to your chaos at the seventh pick in the draft. Well done, Mr. Bull. Way to call it. Way to call it. Bowen, Bowen, Bowen. Here we go. Let me just add this in. Will Bowen, who we will see this weekend on TV. 
We have Georgetown versus Yale in that first round matchup, I do believe. Will Bowen, number 99. Will he take number 99 in the PLL? That's one of the most interesting storylines, I think, coming out of this. Will, Will, Will Bowen be able to be number 99 in the PLL coming out of Georgetown? I think he was a mass kid. Where's all the PA kids? That's what I want to know. Where's all the Pennsylvania lacrosse players getting drafted? Where are they? What else is going on? I, I, I kind of would have, you know, I, the McConaughey thing made a lot of sense to me. So where are we at? We're at Water Dogs right now, which frankly, the Water Dogs don't need anything. The Water Dogs are probably the most ridiculous, most complete team. They happened to win a championship last year. They happened to sign literally everyone back to their team, except for two dudes who decided, you know what? We're just going to retire. We're getting kind of old. We're going to retire. Let's take a look at their roster. Let us see what do the Water Dogs look like. I mean, at this point, you still got McConvey out there. I don't know that that's necessarily an area of need. What's interesting is you've got Sisselberger off the board. Oh, boy. Andy Towers is on the TV, which means there's a mean worthy moment about to happen because anytime they give this guy the microphone, it is something special. If you are not a fan of chaos, you can be an Andy, uh, Andy Towers fan. No problem. Um, so looking at the Water Dogs, yeah, I mean, uh, Jake Withers is a holdout right now. I believe he's playing some lacrosse maybe indoors. Is that the, the situation? Jake Withers. He's on the Halifax Thunderbirds. I'm not a I'm not a big guy in the know when it comes to I did it again I thought your camera my bad I'm not a big guy in the know about NLL but I guess the Thunderbirds are still playing is anybody can anybody confirm that the Thunderbirds are still doing their thing so Jake Withers is a holdout for a time period but this is what I think could be very interesting is the NFL used to be a single running back league you would have your stud running back and you just run them into the ground. And then they became a two running back league where you needed a two headed monster back there at running back, which frankly destroyed all of us fantasy football players. Do you go a dual headed monster on face offs? I heard something like Michigan is, is doing a dual headed monster on face offs uh, over there and their numbers are really good because of it. Do you go with a, yep, I see it right there. Do you go with a Zach Cole, Kevin? I agree with you. Do you go with a Zach Cole in this scenario? Because now you can get a dual-headed face-off guy. That makes a lot of sense. I do know that in some of the mock drafts, there were some people that suggested, let's see. There were people that suggested, all right, so Dan Aresius says Matt Campbell here to the Water Dogs, which we know Matt Campbell is still available. We also know that Peyton Rosenka, I think, I think Peyton was the pick on the, um, I think Peyton was the pick for the PLL mock draft off the off the Discord. Uh, so Campbell's still out. Campbell's probably your best available at this. Oh no, McConvey's your best available at this point. Every draft board had McConvey going either one or two. So. McConvey still being out there is actually quite surprising. But I could see face-off guy because that, the Water Dogs, you want to get... That's like the only thing you really truly need is another face-off guy in this scenario, in my opinion. So why not? Yes, Braden agrees. So we're going, we're going face-off here. We are going to lock it in. Where's my lock it in button? We're going to lock it in. I don't know what, what game show does that anymore. I don't even know who does that. Karks up there just just speaking, just talking about Bowen, being a dog, probably. Kark got a, got a nice little haircut for tonight. Got the buzz, looking tight, looking tight. All right, hold up, let's go back to our main. The dogs are on the clock. It is hard to believe that this has only been the first round. What is it, what time is it? It's 742. And we are finally getting to the last pick of the first round. These next rounds should go faster. We'll see. Um, you know, what's interesting, actually, because it's taking some time, the Water Dogs were supposedly open to trades. Although, Rabel looks like he's walking up. It would be amazing to see a trade here if somebody wanted to come up and get McConvey. Now's the time to do so. But here we go. Paul Rabel. He looks a little stiff up there, frankly. Looks like they just got themselves a McConvey, huh? 
The Water Dogs select Thomas McConvey. There he goes. Water Dogs were feeling it. They said, we got Sours. We've got four midfielders. Four. I didn't even talk about that when we showed that roster slide. Four midfielders in the top 50, and they said, you know what we need right now? A Thomas McConvey. So good for them. I mean, that's kind of crazy that he slid all that way down to them from Toronto. They don't even say Canada. They just say straight up Toronto. Coming to us from the Cavaliers, McConvey, not Cole. Cole is still out there and available for any teams. And there's a few teams that I could see taking a face-off guy before the Water Dogs get to it here this next, this next time. So, yeah, right there, I think they just took best available. They just said, you know what? This is the best guy that is available at this moment. We can't let him slide any further. Um, I'm kind of surprised. They said, hey, we don't want to trade back and, and maybe try to get a few more assets, you know, in the future. They said, uh, we're, we're good with McConvey on our team. I don't blame him. I mean, put McConvey on this roster right here. So Sowers, McArdle, Ethan Walker, and they just brought in Caraway who didn't really get a whole lot of playing time, which I feel like Caraway's falling into that position again. Oh, they're talking to Andy Copeland. I thought they were going to the next pick. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I get it. It's just the best dude, right? It's just the best dude. Yep. Yeah, Chris, I am probably a little behind. Um, my TV's probably ahead of yours or actually with yours, but because of the YouTube stream, it does happen to have like a few second delay, few quite a few seconds. I think it's like five to 10 second delay. So what I say is probably five to 10 seconds off and you maybe even your TV might be a little faster than mine. So that is a probably not incorrect statement whatsoever. Yes, we wanna see Ferreira go in the, in the fourth round. Mike Grace, tell me about Mike Grace. I don't know Grace. Tell me about Grace, Kevin. Where is Mike Grace from? We want these D3 guys. Yeah, D2 guys, yeah. Back when I went to school, it was like D1 or D3. No one went D2, so I don't think much about the D2 world. Cannons are on the clock for the first time. They had traded away their first round pick to the Atlas. And what was that for? I don't remember what that was for. Where? Hold, here it is. Uh, Atlas acquired the pick in a trade from 11 to for the 11th and 24th picks in the 2022 draft. So looks like uh, Cannons had traded up last year and gave the Cannons this pick as well. Oh, RIT, don't you talk. Caden, you stop talking about Xander Dixon. I do not want to bring up his name until the Woods next pick. Give me one pick, man. Just give me one pick. Just give me one chance. Don't you dare put Xander Dixon on the Cannons. Don't you dare. Oh, nice. RIT, were they? No, Tufts was the number one seed. RIT's on that side of the bracket, though, I think I saw, right? All right, let's look at the Cannons roster. Of course, Lyle Thompson. This is the team that just went crazy in this, in this free agency season. They went crazy in this past postseason. Sean Quirk stepped down as the head coach. We now have a Holman in charge of the team, and we now have a Holman joining the team that's a that's a fun one to say holman holman it's like am i saying this right caden saluski most people say please caden that would have been nicer caden saluski um nice pollock i like you my guy um so cannons were the ones that had the uh the the craziest offseason for bringing people in you look at the little slide here you see tons of little green in arrows so that means they transferred in the, the, during this offseason. So, of course, Lyle Thompson, stud, um, probably best player in the league, if he can get some help around him. Marcus Holman, stud from another team. So you just instantly gained a bunch of points. Ridiculously accurate shooter, uh, Marcus Holman. You brought Matt Cavanaugh in. There was a trade between the Redwoods uh, and the Cannons to bring in Cavanaugh, and then Piatelli and some other homeboy went over to the Redwoods, which I'm not really quite sure. It could be a cap space issue thing. Who knows exactly what that's all about. Yeah, uh, the, Virginia's a good team. So, yes, you're absolutely right. Virginia's a good squad. So all, all of them are going to be nice players. You've got Asher Nolting on attack. So you start to question, like, 
Asher Nolting, who was a pick last year, is Asher Nolting uh, looking on the outside in? I mean, do they play Kavanaugh? Frankly, as a Redwoods guy, I wasn't disappointed that he left. I hate to say that, but I think he was like a, he was a fool's gold. Like you kept putting him in there like, hey, he's gonna turn it around, he's gonna turn it around. And he never did, he was always struggling. So, you know, maybe it's a good chance. Maybe it's a good chance for him to get to a new scene to do something good. And Kevin said he's a dog. So, Kevin, I everything you're saying so far looks fantastic. So, I agree with you. Brain's going LSM on this pick. They do need an LSM because Kyle Hartzell is old. Brody Merrill is older. So, Brody Merrill's on the holdout list. I think this is related to, again, the NLL. So, Brody Merrill, Kyle Hartzell are your long stick middies. You need some younger guys there. I think probably on a midfielder, there's Jeff Trainer. What were we talking about Trainer before? Who was talking about Trainer? Um, was it this Trainer or are you talking about a different Trainer? What, what are you talking about? So I could see a midfielder coming in here because that would make sense. Really, this team just needs to get together. I mean, we don't even know what they're going to look like when they add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces to their team, including a goalie in Gettleman. Gettleman left the Archers. The Archers either feel really good about Dobson and I forget the other bruh. They either feel really good about them or they just didn't want uh, this dog hanging out with them anymore. I don't really know what the sitch was, but all I know is the Cannons pick is in. Paul Rabel is announcing the pick. The pick is in and it is Matt Campbell from the Wildcats. The Villanova product, Matt Campbell is going to the cannons. This makes a lot of sense, I think. Well, oh, looks like we're a little behind on my feed here. I think this makes a lot of sense. Give them more firepower. You guys didn't yell at me. I don't think I've been updating the draft ticker. I get too excited, I get too excited. I need somebody just to do this. Matt Campbell heading to the cannons. The Villanova product is going there to score goals. That offense, it, I, if we're being honest, the offense is getting a little scary right now over at the cannons. They were anemic before. Lyle didn't have a whole lot of help. They got some guys now. They got some guys. McConvey. Uh, I need to have to do this a little bit faster now. Are oh, you talking about Jack? Is Jack his bro? Caden, are they related? Matt Campbell. Are they related? Yo, right? Schellenberger's got it. There's... There's a lot of dudes that could be coming out next year between Schellenberger, um, Brendan O'Neill. I mean, frankly, if I'm going to tank, I'm going to tank this year. But if I'm going to trade, I'm going to trade for like top three pick next year. There's going to be some ballers coming out next year for sure. One of the Cavanaugh's potentially is coming out. What's super weird is this whole, uh, hold on, let's remove the cannons. Let's put the woods on the clock. What's weird is this whole, uh, COVID year thing. It makes it kind of tricky to figure out when are lacrosse players actually coming out. Ah, okay. So it's another dude. It's another dude. If Matt Cavanaugh went to your school, oh, is that the home? Brian Holman. I have not seen Brian Holman before. Um, if you're familiar with Earthworm Jim, it's a pretty similar look. Um, What's up, Deshaun? I don't think I've seen you chat. What's up? How are you doing this evening? Yeah, they did. They got help. They got help for him. They got help for Lyle Thompson. So that's pretty huge. Yo, what's up, Mr. Thorman? Welcome to the party. You're not late. You're always on time. In some time zone, that's all. Yeah, Kevin, there you go. O'Neal, Schellenberger, Kavanaugh, Brandau. I forgot about Brandau. Weirman, yes, a lot of dudes. A lot of dudes that are going to be good. I mean, honestly, every year there's going to be a bunch of good guys. What's unique about this whole situation is that we've got eight lacrosse teams. We've got eight PLL teams. So that makes it, yeah, Kastner, that, that makes it difficult. To, uh, there's going to be a lot of really good players on just a few teams. These teams are eventually going to hoard so much good talent. I heard, uh, I think it was outside the box. Um, outside the box, outside the, I think that's what it is. Outside the box, they've got a YouTube channel as well. Uh, they do a, a podcast very often on NLL, PLL, just lacrosse. And they were talking, they were looking at the Water Dogs roster. And the roster 
is everybody's under 30 except for two dudes and i think they were both 30 and then they only had one guy that was 29 it's like what's insane is you can stockpile a lot of young talent the way the salary cap is yes there is a salary cap in the pll but the way it is you probably can figure it out you probably could figure out it's a few grand difference between one player to the next it's not it's nothing crazy we're not talking millions of dollars here versus a few million here or less than a million um so it's it's going to be pretty interesting how these teams can continue to stack really good talent that's just sitting on the bench. Yo, Chrome fan, okay. Chrome, how you feeling about that Hanley pickup, huh? How are you feeling about that Hanley pickup? Let's take a look and see. So, round two. So, we still have our Peyton Rosenka. Oh, the Redwoods are on the clock already. So, let's get excited. The Redwoods go with their Notre Dame heart, and I am so pleased. Brian Tevlin going to the Redwoods. Probably not a guy that people thought was going to go this high. They were like, you know what? We are not letting Tevlin. You know, the... Mitchell Pelkey is, is probably not the dog. I'm, um, he is a sweet dude for what he does, but he's probably not the guy. He is probably not... Who's on the clock right now? He is probably not the guy. Brian Tevlin... Okay, it is the Atlas. Brian Tevlin going to the Redwoods. I mean, it just makes sense. He's he's that kind of guy, but I'm kind of surprised to see him go already. I didn't think the Redwoods would have a chance because I didn't think he would be uh, going this early in the draft. I thought probably a later round pick let's see what did the uh let's see what the experts let's see what the people that really know what did they say about when tevlin was going to go but tevlin does everything he plays offense he plays defense he played he played pole i think he played man down defense with a long stick he plays offense with a shorty he plays defense with a shorty he even plays the bagpipes no matter what position you want tevlin to be in he will be that dude for you so uh, who's this guy? Adam Liberti had Tevlin going at 15. So what are we, pick 11 or so? Uh, or 10, pick 10. You know what? I forgot to talk about how much I loved Xander Dixon, but apparently that was a good thing I didn't because they didn't pick him. I was really thinking Xander Dixon would have made a lot of sense. Brian Tevlin is ranked probably the second best two-way midfielder short stick d mid according to dan aristia i disagree because he went to notre dame so that makes him automatically probably the top pick and because he went to the redwoods also a top top pick yeah i honestly chrome does they just need good players so boom good player and the next pick is in atlas Xander Dixon. I I don't even know what to say at this point. Like, who who was it? Who was it? Was it you, Ty? Who was it that said Atlas need to win this draft tonight? I mean, I mean Xander Dixon going to the Atlas. After taking the two best polls, and to me, this is the best finisher in the whole draft. I was taking a look at the stats online. You take a look, you're going to see that this dude not only scores some of the highest numbers of goals in the entire league, his scoring percentage, his shot percentage, how many balls he throws in the net versus misses, he's over 50%. I think he was 57% this season in goals off of his shot. If you're going to score over 50% of the time and you're going to score almost 50 goals, that's a dog. I think that was a huge get right now. Xander, Dixon, Braden, my man, they are all righties and lefties at this, at this level. Other than some of the box players, they're mainly uh, one hand. But Dixon going to the Atlas, that is just a huge, huge pick. I... 
Dang, man, they are absolutely crushed. Deshaun, so I, I'm going to uh, I'm going to declare my second favorite PLL team and and be not so shy about it. I mean, gosh, I was a huge fan of Atlas when they picked Costabile because I wanted all Notre Dame players to go on one team. The fact that Xander Dixon was still there, dang. If I'm an Atlas fan, I am feeling real good right now, real good. Let's get back to the Chrome. What do the Chrome need again? Let's remind ourselves what the Chrome look like. Oh, that's right. They're one of the complete teams, and they probably could use offense of long stick midi. Looks like they are ready to pick. Troy Hedinger from Jacksonville. One of those dolphin characters down there in Jacksonville. Troy Hedinger. I know nothing about this homeboy, but apparently Chrome think they do. Whoa. Troy. You know what the one thing is I need? Remind me next year, I need to figure this out. How to keep the previous draft picks top of mind, because I, Unless I see them scrolling across the bottom of the screen the same time you do. Long stick midi, Troy Hedinger. So I thought he was offensive player based upon the highlights. It appears as though he's a long stick midi. Didn't they just say they need an offensive long pole? That makes sense. That is the first, maybe the second time tonight that I feel good about myself and my random nonsense. So Hedinger is not even on, is he a midi? Oh, there he is, Troy Hedinger. He's not even really on the list from Dan Aresia. So it looks as though we all don't know exactly what other people think they know. That's an interesting pick. Is he on the other? He's not even on the other draft board. Troy, 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 Troy. Nope. So interesting. He is not on, I don't think, Adam Liberti's uh, draft, mock draft. He is way down the list on, uh, way down the list. Not even on the mock, oh, he is on the mock draft. He's, he's in the round four going to Chrome in Dan Aristia's draft. So, sorry, Troy, I don't know. I know nothing about this guy. I'm kind of surprised he went at 12. Chrome feels like other people wanted a piece of this guy. I don't disagree. Peyton would have made more sense. I, I agree with you, Kevin. Based upon everything I heard, let's let's be honest here. I'm not. Uh, I am not going to be some some dude that's like I know what's going on. Sorry. Let's get archers on the clock because we are now halfway through round two. Just like that, we are flying now. We are flying now as we head to commercial break. So there you go, Chris. That was my commercial break. Uh, I, I mentioned it as it was happening. So now you can count how many seconds back I was. Um, he's good. Thank you, Lacrosse with Nash. Good news is he's good. But I, I think even though he's good, I felt like there were some other guys that were probably better. There's a, there's a number of pundits out there, uh, Lacrosse media pundits that felt like other people were better. I kind of trust them. Uh, what's unique about all of this situation is I would love to know how these coaches go about the draft. How do they go about evaluating talent? Coach Bates made it sound like he reads all the mock drafts, so he's trying to learn from other people as well. It sounds like he watches games himself, but these guys have other lives. They've got other things to do. This is, this is my one issue that I'd love to see change in the PLL is let's get some full-time coaches. We're doing everything we can to get full-time players that, that can make money and, and figure this whole thing out, but let's get some full-time coaches. Let's pay the coaches to be full-time so they can focus in on this because the quality on the field is going to be better if the coaching is better as well. I agree, pay the players. I think the next step is to pay the coaches. And then they did make it sound like they don't want to expand teams. If you were on the Mike Rabel, ask me anything on uh, on Reddit. It did, Reddit, not Reddit, good golly, um, on Discord. He did make it sound like what their focus is right now is on building players' salaries before they expand the quantity of teams. So. There's that, so take that for what you will. But I could see coaches needing to get paid more because 
I don't know how they go about this process. So the whole point of that whole rant before we got to where we are now was, yeah, I don't know how they go about evaluating talent. It has to be a difficult thing. There are so many players, so many different games. How are you going to watch all these different games when it seems like the coaching staff is quite small? you got to rely on some other people's help. Sometimes you get weird picks. We will, we will have to go back and flash back. If, if I had a, a flashback button, we'll go back to Logan Wisnaskis's when the Chrome selected him first overall, and he kind of played like a first overall guy. Everyone was like, what? We didn't have him till later. They still had him first round, but later in the first round. So maybe, uh, maybe Chrome knows what's up. Maybe, maybe they're doing something the rest of us don't know. What's his money ball statistics? That would be interesting. All right, so we have Art. Did I knock Archers off the clock? I think Archers are back. Oh, we're showing Lehigh getting pumped for Sisselberger. Lehigh draft party. Huge congrats to the Missileberger going to the PLL, going to be the Greg Gorenlian. Greg Gorenlian. Junior, next version, whatever. Kark showing his best available short stick D mids with Peyton, Rizanka, Chet Camisio, Piper Bond, which is a solid name if we're going for that. Connor Maher and then Evan Zinn out of Virginia, although I would argue that there should be a local product out of Virginia. It's a little bit better. So it seems like Kark thinks this is going to be a short stick D mid. Who's it going to be? The pick is in. I'm still watching to figure out who it is. Connor Maher, North Carolina. This is, that was, that was a, so they just showed some super weird highlight. Super weird highlight. I'm not even sure what that was. Connor Maher, North Carolina. He must be a short stick D mid. Is that, is that what I'm looking at right now? Connor Maher, short stick D mid, according to, it's interesting. According to Dan Arista, he's the third best. What's going on with Peyton Rizanka? Does anybody know? Is, is Peyton Rizanka's Twitter, is there some inappropriate things coming out about Peyton that people are like, we don't want to take him anymore? Very interesting. As Peyton continues to slide. Yo, Hughes from Brazil. What's up, my man? I was literally just talking about Brazil today. San Paulo. We were talking about how long it takes to fly from Brazil up to the United States. Dude, that's a crazy long flight. Didn't even realize it. Going to meet some work folk from Brazil here in the U.S. in August. Get on that plane, Thomas. Or is it Tomas? Tomas? Probably Tomas. I don't know. Who did Atlas take? I just got some really good ice cream, bruh. You gonna come in here and just flex about how good your ice cream is when I don't have the ability to have ice cream? Caden, man. Caden, here, the scroll, it's coming right now. Atlas took Xander Dixon, Chrome came and took Troy Henniger. You know, I should have added positions on these, huh? And then Connor Maher, well, frankly, I don't even know. Connor Maher, short stick D mid. Peyton Rizenka is still out there. You gotta start thinking. If you're a team that was thinking short stick D mid, <clears throat> Redwoods, do you trade up in this draft to get a Peyton Rosenka? He's dropping. He's becoming more affordable with trade capital. Yo, Maryland Chief is in the house. Belo Horizonte. Uh, Horizonte. So you speak Portuguese, right? So if I speak Spanish, that is literally means nothing. Bro, Caden, your ice cream was from an ice cream truck? They're not even around here yet. Where are you living, Caden? Where are you living? By the way, is that, you're flexing in your picture and you're flexing with your words. Man. I'm going to have to send a, a, an SOX, SOS, good golly, text up to my family to be like, hey, I'm going to need you. I'm going to need you to bring me some ice cream from an ice cream truck because right now Caden is getting fantastic ice cream. By the way, I just got outbid on a Lyle Thompson lacrosse card. So which one of you, which one of you is out there trying to outbid me on, on this? Oh gosh, arches are off the clock. Whips are on the clock. Pick is in. And the whips take care of a need. Petey LaSalla from Virginia. This is gonna be an interesting one. 
because I think Petey LaSala has the chance to be a dog because that's all we look for anymore. Wait, can't wait to the day where a dog is 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 not the individual you want. Wasn't it wasn't it once upon a time you didn't really want a dog? Now now that's all you want is a dog. Petey LaSala from Miller Place, New York. Just looking at him. He looks like a face-off guy. He looks like a Fogo. He's got that look to him. So, yeah, speaking of dogs, I mean, this is a guy, before we had Roman Puglisi chewing glass as a short stick D midi, now we've got Peter LaSala, who's not chewing glass, but probably would get it and shoot it out, rake it out to his best friend or whatever, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, PD LaSala from Virginia going to the Whip Snakes. This was definitely a position of need because they needed they needed someone for Joe Nardello. Joe Nardello is going to be out for a little while, if you're not aware. I think he tore his uh, ACL in PLL, in PLL, in NLL, in the box game, indoor game, I think. He tore it. I think it was in NLL. They needed a face-off guy to help them through for a while. There was hints Stagnita, Coach Stagnita, did suggest that he may be coming back later in the year. But getting PD LaSala at this pick, I think... I think as a Whips fan, you should be pretty happy right now. I think you should be pretty happy. Tennessee, the second time in your life it has come around. Well, I am glad. What a night for you. Ice cream trucks, PLL drafts, letting everyone know. Good time to get it. Braden, your team is back on the clock. Let's go and take a look at the Chaos roster. What are we feeling with this pick? What are we feeling? I think... We didn't get our poll earlier that we thought we were going to get, right? We did not get our poll we thought earlier. Let's see what the experts are thinking at this point. Round two, going to the chaos. Brian Minicus is, uh, is the recommended pick. Let's see. Who do they go with? Paul Rabel is up to the board. The pick is in. And the chaos select... Brian Minicus, shout out to you, Dan Arista. Nailed it. Called that pick, Brian Minicus, Georgetown. He appears to be an attackman that is going to just win and score goals. Brian Minicus. And I guess he probably fits their system, which is why he would be in this position. Let's see what our friend... Adam Liberti thought at this time, did he put Minicus? Nope, shout out. He thought Tevlin, but Tevlin already went. Tevlin already went. Minicus, good for you, Dan Arisa. Nailed it. Nailed it on the Minicus pick. Hold on, we got to update the draft ticker. So all of those that show up late to the party, at this point, you are now officially late. If you are showing up now, you are officially late. We are almost done with the second round which, to me, more importantly, means we're almost back to a Redwoods pick. Brian Minicus, Georgetown. I want to grow... Yes! Dude. Okay. Okay, Tomas. Okay. Get some lacrosse going down there. I don't know that... I don't know that I'm familiar. Do, do you know if Brazil has a world lacrosse team? I'm not familiar with Brazil having a world lacrosse team. This this seems reasonable. We should get this going, my friend. We need to, we need to get more people interested down there. If if our friends in Africa are starting lacrosse, then our friends in Brazil should be getting teams as well. We need to we need to get this popping. I get it. Football is is popular. Soccer, whatever you want to call it. We need to get some lacrosse going. We need to get this going. And Je Jeffrey's like, Caden, brah, I want some ice cream. Send it up. Send the truck my way. Just tell Caden, go back out there and tell that truck to head north. That's basically where the rest of us are. If you're in Tennessee, the rest of us are pretty much north. Mitticus with 27 goals and 20 assists on the season for a Georgetown team that's pretty good. I'm interested to see because this Georgetown team got upset last year by the Delaware Blue Hens. If you're getting upset by a Blue Hen, you're probably upset, but shout out to the Blue Hens. Former lacrosse player of mine is on the Blue Hens. Solid flex right there. Um, not that kind of... This is getting embarrassing. Anyway... 
Where are we at now? Where are we at? Let's 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 move on. Let's move on. Chaos are off the clock. It should be the water dogs on the clock. Not only are they on the clock, but the pick is in. Johns Hopkins defender, and he goes by the name of Alex Mazzone. This is a guy I think a lot of people thought we're gonna go before now. This is a guy I feel like people thought we're gonna go a little bit earlier. Alex Mazzone, do we have him on this board? Alex Mazzone, okay. 21 to the Archers. We are at 16, so that is definitely not earlier. Alex Mazzone on this one goes to 20 to Chrome, so I'm a liar. I'm a liar. He had, he's actually earlier than a few people thought he would go. But he's a Stony Brook, New York feller going to Johns Hopkins. Alex Mazzone. It's just a fun name, right? We're going to give him credit for having a fun name. Kudos to him. Well done on that. Mazzone. That's a good, strong family name. Uh, all right. So we are now back to the top of the board. The cannons are on the clock. Let's get back to the cannons roster. They've only had one pick so far. I can't remember who they picked. Did they pick? They picked Campbell, didn't they? Didn't they pick up Campbell? Yo, Jeffrey, Brazilian lacrosse player in America, let's go. We got the Brazil connection. We need you to go home, find some friends in Brazil, and uh, tell them to play lacrosse because Thomas would like to play more lacrosse in Brazil. We need, we need to get that happening. We need to get that happening. Thomas and, and Jeffrey, make sure you guys reach out to each other and make this happen for me. Make it happen. And, and you know, if you just want to give a little, little, little publicity to the channel that the connection happened here, great. That would be amazing. Uh, Alex Mazzone is on a seven-game active streak with cause turnovers. That's not too shabby. All right, let's get back to the, the roster here. Um, the last round they picked, and we're all waiting for this ticker to come by together. It was cannons, yep. Matt Campbell, right. So LSM, I am feeling, I am feeling a deep hole here. Just because that's something they could use, that's something they would need. And you could go face off here too. Uh, what's the, what's the kid with the Villanova kid? Cole? Is that Cole? I could see a face off guy here too. Cannons. It, it wouldn't hurt to have a uh, have a face off guy. Um, ballers. They're pretty much out of ballers. So I said they need chemistry, which is going to happen. Uh, ballers, which they're kind of down the list. Ballers would have been kind of the first couple. I would have hoped they would like to say trade up for something, but they got Matt Campbell. He's a baller. That will work. Um, LSM makes a ton of sense. LSM makes a ton of sense. So they do have Brody Merrill. Brody Merrill will be coming back. He's also a top 50 player, so they will get that, but I think they just, they need, they need players. They need players. They need guys that can come in and play what's called lacrosse. Where's our Garrett Ledman? He's in a, a midfielder, right? Yeah, so Ledman from Duke potentially makes sense at this point, according to Dan Aristia. He believes uh, Ledman would make sense. You know who also makes a lot of sense right now? Short stick D mid. I know they went with Bubba Fairman last year, but you still have Peyton on the board. You got Zach Goodrich, who was a top 50 guy last year. Bubba Fairman and Pat Eslanian. I mean, Bubba played both uh, offensive midfield and defensive midfield. Do we see Peyton finally go off the board? It's not a bad play right here. It's not a bad play. I don't know. It depends. Are these teams valuing more two-way midfielders? That's the story that we've been hearing, is they like their two-way midfielders. If they truly like two-way midfielders, maybe they don't go with a Peyton. Maybe Peyton's a little too one-way for some folks. I don't know. This is what we need to find out. Good news is, did somebody buy that Lyle Thompson card? No. We still got two days and 22 hours, so nobody go look up that listing for Lyle Thompson uh, uh, PSA 10 graded card. Just don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, Ryan Tierney left because he went to the Redwoods. Who else left? Jake Ficaro retired. Nick Morocco leaving. I thought that was an interesting one that the goalie decided to skip town. I thought that was kind of interesting. I would have expected um, him to stick around a little bit more, but they didn't have the best goalie play. So, you know, these, is, these are things that are okay. 
These are things that are okay. Uh, Brian Tevlin coming back. A lot of people excited about it. Just checking out the Twitter, making sure I didn't get anything important from... <laughs> yo, yo, appreciate Mr. Thorman throwing the, the stream out there. Lots of good stuff happening. Lots of good stuff happening everywhere. How much did his sticks? Oh, good golly. Jeffrey, those sticks, you're talking about the Lyle Thompson ones? I think they were $500 a pop. I can't remember the quantity he made. It was like 25 or 40 or 50. It wasn't a ton. He sold them for 500 bucks a pop. I was there. I was able to add two to my cart. I didn't want to buy two, but I was just kind of curious. Oh, can I add more? I was able to add more than one to my cart. So I had two in my cart. It said $1,000. I panicked. I quickly closed out of it. I opened it back up and they were gone just like that. And I was there right at, I think it was 10 a.m. when those sticks went. Um, and yeah, the Lyle, these are the Lyle Thompson sticks. If I wasn't clear on that, or if you didn't read that from Jeffries, the, the Lyle Thompson uh, made sticks, the, the original, original traditional wooden style that he made with Jack Johnson, right? No, no, no. Did he make it with Jack Johnson? I'm panicking now. I think it was Jack Johnson. All right, Kark's best available. A lot of offensive guys left. Jack Myers, Ty Kurtz, there's your Jack Trainer. He says Jack Trainer is third on the list right now. Max Wardbaum and then Cole Kirst. I did not think that Cole Kirst was coming out this year. According to Kark, he's the best available, number five. What, what do I know? But here's our cannons. I'm thinking LSM. I'm thinking we're going with a poll on this pick. What does this guy say? He says Cam Wires. Potentially. Um, wait, oh, it's Chaos is on the board. My bad. Chaos is on the board. Chaos is on the board. Why did you guys tell me I was doing this all wrong? Chaos is on the board. The pick is in. And it looks like it's going to be a Ty Kurtz. Coming to you from Delaware, adding to that offense yet again. Ty Kurtz from Delaware going to chaos. Why don't you guys yell at me? That was the wrong, I had the wrong team on the clock. I had the wrong roster up. Didn't even know what I was doing. I mean, this is just embarrassing. I told you this, I told you this is nonsense. We're getting deep in the rounds now. I'm not even paying attention. He's from Puslinch, Ontario. Sorry for all of you uh, that are in Ontario, but that's where he's from. I, I don't know if I said that correctly or not. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Ty Kurtz, definitely somebody that a lot of people thought highly of in this draft was Ty Kurtz. Going third round to Delaware, or to Delaware, to Chaos from Delaware. Probably not a bad play. It, I think Chaos kind of likes these guys from the not-so-big-name schools. They like a guy with a chip on his shoulder. They like a guy that's willing to just grind and work hard. That seems to be the Chaos mentality. You know, one thing that I heard through the Andy Towers interviews is he basically said it without saying it. He wants guys that are willing to be team-first players. People are willing to put their egos aside, move on out of the way, and go... I just want to win lacrosse. Highly competitive team, guys. It looks like Jack Rowlett is a huge fan. Greatest day ever, uh, according to Jack Rowlett. So pleased that Ty Kurtz fell to them in the third round, which, according to Dan Aricia, he should have went in the second round. According to other homeboy, Ty Kurtz, I don't even know. <laughs> Tevlin is very on brand for the Redwoods. Totally agree. Minicus he had in the fourth round. Ty Kurtz, Ty Kurtz, Ty Kurtz, Ty Kurtz. Don't even see it. Don't even see it. But he should be on there somewhere. Don't even see it. What are we talking about here? Ah. No place to play lacrosse in Brazil. There's lots of, yeah, just find a field and walls. Fields and walls will do it for you. Redwood's pick is in. Sorry, Redwood's pick is in. I got excited. And the Redwood select 
Cole Kirst coming to you from Cuse, which I was just like, wait a minute. Is this guy really in this draft? Cole Kirst coming from Syracuse. This is when I wish I could hear what they're saying because who knows? Who knows what's going on with Cole Kirst? Is Cole Kirst truly available in this draft? I was under the impression that he was not in this draft. So that's why I'm a little confused at this exact moment. Cole Kirst out of Syracuse. Did they just take a shot on a dude? He is a Bernardsville, North Carolina. What? New Jersey. Cole Kirst. Cole Kirst. Where's Cole Kirst at? Where are you at, Cole? Where are you at? Oh, no, there he is. Players to watch. Midfielder out of Syracuse. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, Thomas, there's a lot of stuff to do that you can do solo. Yes, finding friends would be better. Can you watch? Is the PLL available? Can you watch it down there? Can you see the PLL on TV on whatever system it is that you so choose to use in Brazil. I don't know how that works. Do you get ESPN, ESPN Plus? Yeah, Chuck. So I've got a, I'm, I got a flashback to uh, Jamie Trimboli coming out of Syracuse, late round pick that the Redwoods picked up last year, two years ago. And it did not pan out so well. I'm very hopeful that Cole Kirst will pan out. This is the third Kirst brother, right? Are there four of them? And this is the third one? Or is this one that transferred from somewhere else? I'm trying to remember my Kirst brothers. There's too many of them. There's too many Kirst brothers. I can't, I can't keep them all track. All right, let's go to Atlas. What do we think in the Atlas need at this moment? Gosh. The Atlas could just take whatever they want. It doesn't even matter. I mean, honestly, if I'm the Atlas, I'm looking at trade and I'm like, hey, uh, any of you guys want this pick? I don't need anybody else for, for this year. We're, I mean, we're, we're good. We, we real good. I mean, they, they went long pole, long pole first round. Then they got Xander Dixon, who's just going to be stud. Ah, that's no good. He transferred. So where was he last year? He was somewhere else last year, right? Chuck, where was he last year? Because he was playing in a playoff game last year versus his brother. His brother's at Cornell. Oh, they're showing Bates. They're showing Bates' computer. Bates' pick is in. Here we go. Razanka. Peyton finally got picked of... Of course it would be the Atlas. Would you stop picking all the great players? Good golly. Peyton Razanka going to the Atlas. Holy cow. This feels like cheating at this point. I mean, Atlas, if this is not your year, <sighs> anyway, Peyton Razanka. Wouldn't you like a name like that? What a guy. They're getting Arguably, arguably some of the best players in this draft. Peyton Razanka, short stick, D-mid, coming out of California, going to Loyola of Maryland, now headed to the Atlas. That wasn't, Coach Bates is not the Atlas guy. I don't know why I thought that. Going to Coach Pressler. Coach Pressler is nailing this draft. This is his very first draft. This is the very first draft, and he's like, boys, I'm playing chess over here. I don't know what you got going on, but this is my league now. Coach Pressler showing up in a big way. Lehigh, Lehigh, okay, okay. Wasn't he playing against his brother? All right, Chrome. Chrome's on the clock, right? Atlas just picked. Chrome is on the clock. Let's go back to our Chrome board, which again, here is another team that feels complete. This is the problem when you have only eight teams in the league. So many of these teams are feeling complete. JT Giles Harris got off of injury, looks like an absolute stud. They got Mike Manley, another top 50 dude on defense. Jesse Bernhardt, another good guy. This is where I think the offensive long stick midi I was thinking was a potential play but they did go with that Troy Hediger pick early that we were kind of like, 
For reals? For, re for real, for reals? So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's something to think about. Oh, tell me this fills in. <gasps> the PLL website fills in the draft picks for you. That's amazing. Except they're a little slow on the uptick. But Chrome had selected previously Sam Hanley in the first round. Then they came back with the Troy Hedinger pick that we all kind of scratched our heads a little bit on from a midfielder perspective. I still think they need, I think, didn't they show him playing long stick midi? I think they did show him playing a little long stick midi. They got a shooter with range. I, I don't know what you do at this point if I'm Chrome. I'm just kind of looking for the best available option out there. The pick appears to be back and in. So let's play the sound. Jack Myers out of Ohio State. This is an interesting one. He's definitely a guy that people have heard of. He was higher on draft boards early on in the process. So what does he do? Does he become that guy that people thought he could be or not? I mean, those are kind of the two options. I guess you could exceed. You could exceed what people thought maybe you'd be, but Jack Myers from the Ohio State, a team that really dropped off this year. A guy that I feel like needs the ball in his stick a good bit, which could be interesting in that roster that they're starting to build now with Hanley, with Nauskas's. But a Bethesda, Maryland finisher, we will see. The number 20 pick is Jack Myers going to the Chrome. Yeah, Brain, you're just filling out the roster. You're just saying, look, they don't have that many guys in this spot. Maybe they need one more. Speaking of one more, let's go to the Archers again. This is a roster in which I think they need players. They need some dudes. They don't have a ton of dudes on offense. They did go Sisselberger in the first round. They kind of surprised us with that strong Fogo pick. But look, if Sisselberger is as advertised, that is a key piece that they really, truly needed. In the second round, they went with the short stick D mid, Connor Maher. They have yet to go offense. I think they've got to go offense here. It feels like they've got to go offense. So do they go with like a Dylan Watson from Georgetown slash Jacksonville? No. Do they go with him? Do they want to look... For, I, I guess on attack, you're probably going to have O'Keefe, Amen, and D. Simone. I, frankly, I'd probably be looking for another attackman. So I think I'd probably go with like a Dylan Watson from Georgetown, maybe a Logan McGovern, potentially, or a Cross Ferreira. Let's get some D3 love going on in here. All right, Kevin, I'm, I'm going to trust you on this one. I liked, I liked your analysis earlier, Kevin. So, Cursed, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to give this a shot, Cause especially because he transferred in. That's, that's what makes me feel a little bit better about that one. Three attackmen, one short stick D mid has been added. Well, it looks like we're going to a commercial break. While we go to a commercial break, let's talk a little bit about location-based teams sorry my chair is squeaky and i keep slowly rolling away from my table let's talk about location-based teams how do you feel about this league toying with the idea i mean it's we knew it was going to happen at some point of moving away from a tour based model to a location based model meaning Teams like the greatest team of them all, the Redwoods, would have to choose a location, a region, a city, or a state in which they would be from. What do you think? Do you like this idea? You know, whip snakes maybe become the Baltimore whip snakes. Uh, just because they happen to have tons of Maryland players, I don't know. I'm just coming up with names. Uh, the archers become the New England archers. If they become location-based, how would you like to see it? Would you like it to be city so they literally stay at the same field all the time? What I thought was interesting, I never thought about this before, is if it does become regional-based, does it be truly New England where they play two games in Foxborough Stadium, they play two games at Fairfield, Connecticut, they play a game up in Vermont, you know, would that be interesting to you? Is it regional-based? Do you want them to be city-based? So you know a Baltimore team is always going to be at Homewood Field every week, week in, week out. Or 
Do they become a mid-Atlantic team where they're in Baltimore one week, they're in Philly for a home game the next week, they're in Pittsburgh in a home game the next week? What are you, what are you feeling? What are you feeling? New York for the whips? What, what takes you down that path there, Kevin? What takes you down that path? You're calling Jeff Connor. Jeff Connor. I don't know Jeff Connor. I don't see Jeff Connor on my list. Of course, I think we already talked about Trainer before. He wasn't on my list, but apparently he's on Kark's board. Trainer is on Kark's board. No one's taking him. Mix it up. Regional sounds good. I'm I'm not opposed to regional because I'm going to be honest. I liked the tour based model. I became a fan of this model. So doing a regional team such that we have a southeast team that travels between Orlando, Florida to Atlanta, Georgia, which Atlanta, you got to show up. You got to sell tickets. It doesn't seem like they're selling tickets there. Um, oh, boy. Sisselberger is about to break stuff on the television. Philly Faceoff League is showing Sisselberger, and the dude is hyped. That was kind of scary. Rachel DeCecco is back on, ready to tell us the next pick. But, yeah, I don't know. What, do you, what are you feeling like? I like the regional approach. I do. The pick is in from Rachel. Looks like we got another short stick D midi of Piper Bond. Come on. Tell me that is not a fantastic name. Piper Bond is now showing up on the roster. Not only on the roster, he's on the scouting report. Piper Bond coming to you from Penn. So not only is he a Bond, but he is a smart Bond. Going to the Archers, Piper Bond. What a dog. He's got to be. He's just got to be. Let's take Archers off the clock. Who comes after the Archers? This is, this is where things get complicated. Piper Bond, short stick D mid out of Baltimore, Maryland. Whip Snakes are now on the clock. Short stick D mid, was that something that we felt like they needed? Defensive depth. I mean, they did just have Dominique Alexander retire, so it makes sense from that perspective to try to add some more depth. They did bring Tim Edwards in. You had Latrell Harris, Mark McNeil. Those guys are kind of getting up there, so yeah. Yeah, I think it makes sense. You bring in a short stick D mid, young blood, ready to run, ready to do the job. Piper Bond, now part of your Bows Up Archers clan. Growing the game is better regionally. I don't disagree. What could be interesting is maybe they start regional and then they become more city specific. You could see that, but maybe they're regional for two years. And then they start to hone in on, okay, which location truly sells the most? And that's where they become the home city of. That would be interesting. What was very interesting in this announcement that was put out by Sportico is they also mentioned that they don't necessarily need to be the same team names they are now. Would you hate it if your archers were no longer the archers lacrosse club? What if they became the... Boston, no, that wouldn't make sense. What if they became the the, the New York Bar the Long Island Lizards? The what if they became one of those MLL teams again? I don't really like going back to the MLL team names. If I'm being honest with you, the league didn't do so well. The PLL overtook it. I don't think I'd like going back to those names. While you ponder that one, the Whips pick is in. And it's Garrett Ledman. This feels like a whip snakes pick. Garrett Ledman from Duke. He's a he's a big body. They needed some help coming out of that midfield. You got a guy with a little bit of range that's now going to be shooting from the outside, but also can beat his guys one on one. Probably not a bad pick if you're a whip snakes fan. If you don't like the whip snakes, I'm sorry, but they probably just got themselves a pretty good dude in Garrett. Ledman from Duke, who they're listing as a midfielder from Annapolis, Maryland, number one on the field and number one in some people's hearts. Also, a lot of hair on top of that head. Brad Smith is going to look at him and be like, dude, you got a lot of hair on your head. And if he does that, kudos to him because that's just a statement of the obvious. Am I right? Am I right? Which region would you put each one of these teams? If there's a Pacific Northwest team, 
if there's somebody out there in Oregon, Washington, Utah, which team? Do you pick? Do you literally divide out the country into regions? Or do you stick to some of more of your hotbeds? Do you continue to try to grow the game? Or as an organization that literally needs money to survive, do you try to make money? What do you do? That is a difficult question. Yes, the MLL did try to buy the PLL. If you watched Fate of the Sport, Fate of the Sport, which was the documentary put on, which kudos to, to, to the Rables. They knew what they were doing. In Fate of the Sport, they showed just kind of that scenario, the walkthrough of the MLL trying to buy out the PLL where they just said, no way. Uh, and then you see them take over the MLL. That's pretty interesting stuff. It really is. What? Oh! Interesting. The pick is in. The Chaos at the midfield select Nick Rowlett. Now, if that name is familiar, if that name is familiar, it is simply because Nick happens to have a brother named Jack who also plays for the Chaos. Nick Rowlett of Burke, Virginia is going to chaos. Interesting pick because that is not necessarily somebody that was highly listed when it came to face-off specialists. Uh, I don't know if you're going for a uh, family pedigree here. Uh, was this throwing a bone at Jack Rowlett? I mean, you talk to Andy Towers, he's going to be like, no way. This was the right pick for the right team. But coming out of Michigan, we've got Nick Rowlett going to the chaos. There you go, Braden. You've got two Rowlettes. Don't make a right on the chaos roster right now. Very interesting maneuver. Whoops. Oh, no, that's right. Very interesting maneuver there. Chaos picking Nick Rowlett. If I look to see where we thought Nick Rowlett was as far as a face-off guy. So who are we missing? Zach Cole hasn't gone yet, right? Who's out there for it? Philadelphia Archers? All right. Oh, they're, they're going to interview Towers and be like, do you really want two Rowlettes? Because two Rowlettes are now outnumbering you. Every time Andy Towers speaks, it cracks me up. Just looking, I have no idea what the words are that are coming out of his mouth, but you know they're absolute gold and with a, a, a hint of arrogance. Buffalo, Buffalo Chaos, actually, I do not disagree with this one. That does feel like the perfect fit. Buffalo Chaos, Philly Archers. I'd rather Philly Redwoods, just saying, just really, just selfish. I was actually thinking Central Pennsylvania Redwoods. Because look, you can get here from, from Philly, from Baltimore. It makes a lot more sense. Honey Badgers, change the name. Change, change the name to food of that area. We want the uh, Baltimore crab cakes, Philly cheesesteaks, the uh, Chicago deep dishes. Maybe you can get sponsored by food, by restaurants. I mean, the players might like that. Did I put Rowlett in? I think I put Rowlett in. Jack Rowlett's brother, Nick Rowlett. The water dogs are on the clock. Who do our mock drafts say they're getting? Garrett Ledman? Definitely not happening. He already went. We've got Kyle Long. We still have James Riley, Alex Simmons. Oh, the pick is in. Was it Chris? Defenseman from Notre Dame, Chris Fake. The Water Dogs, the Texas Water Dogs are stealing a Notre Dame player. How dare they? Chris Fake. Chapel Hill Chauncey coming in out of nowhere just saying let's take the water dogs to Texas with their brand new Chris Fake coming out of Notre Dame player of the week quite a few times by way of Allentown New Jersey wearing the number seven Chris Fake which this actually is interesting in that I forget this guy's name every time Adam Liberty had him actually going at 11 and our homeboy 
There's fake. It is interesting how you go about this because it is difficult for everyone to figure out exactly. You've seen the football mock drafts. They're all over the place. So Dan Aristia has him actually going at 25. He went at 24. I mean, come on. Dan is killing it tonight right now. Uh, but, yes, the 24th pick is Chris Fake of the Irish going to the Texas Water Dogs, which Chapel Hill Chauncey says is probably the best location for this. Oh, Rowlett said something about Badgers. So I had it on, so I'm a little concerned. I did not want the audio from the TV coming through because I've heard um, they love to keep showing this Adler conversation. Uh, I have, uh, or Adler, basically, they're, they're showing it again from another uh, view, Adler getting his name picked. I have seen before where YouTube shuts down streams if you are utilizing someone else's YouTube video. Uh, and I also believe if you're trying to basically post live TV. So I panicked, I hit the mute button on the TV, so I cannot hear anything they're saying. I'm reading lips and I actually don't know how to read lips. So I guess I'm not reading lips. Chris, what's up with that, man? What's up with that? Somebody's gotta get drafted, may as well be you. May as well be you. But I guess that when they faked you out, Get it? Uh, the water dogs would end up somewhere that would be well. Yo. So Barstool, yeah, because Barstool, I don't even understand that situation. Does Barstool really own the team? I'm not understanding that whole really agreement or whatever it is because they let them pick the name or help pick the name or it was all staged for publicity, whatever it was. But there is Barstools literally everywhere, right? I mean, they've got offices all over. There's a Chicago one. I could see the Water Dogs being a Chicago team. The river's right there. Um, yeah, we could be Water Dogs out of that river. They turn green uh, in in March for St. Patty's Day. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of options when it comes to those locations. So yeah, it will be interesting to see what happens. It sounds like it doesn't happen anytime soon. It does sound like they're probably going to be in those new home markets next year, but. Let's be honest, they've probably been in whatever home market these are. They've probably been going there every year because that's where they make money. We need to remember, and, and I heard this from Dan Reese's podcast, and I completely agree. Uh, we need to be ready for these teams to pick based upon dollars. If your country, your country, if your city does not show up to the games and does not spend money, it doesn't make sense for the PLL to go there. I know we want to grow the game, but it's important to secure funding to continue to grow the game. So unfortunately, you have to do that kind of thing. <laughs> hey, it, it, no time like the present. No time like the present, Chris. It is time, it has to happen somewhere. Oh, we're getting a breakdown of positional selections. Seven people have been selected from midfield, six from defense, five from attack, kind of surprising, three short stick D mids and three face off guys, which I'm pretty sure Zach Cole is still on the board, which most people, I think, had Zach Cole as, like, the number two face-off guy. If I am not mistaken. Oh, Re Rachel's up. The pick is in. Defenseman from High Point, but I didn't catch the name. Defenseman from High Point, Grant Amon. That's what all the guys say when he throws a check. Oh, man. Sorry, the puns are alive and well at the moment, although they're probably not well, but they are alive. Grant Amon of the Cannons now, formerly from the High Point Panthers, is now going to the Cannons. Number four from Purcell, Virginia, stuck semi-local to his hometown. Grant Amon with two, a two M's and two N's. Interesting. High point poll. Did I see Grant? So he is deep on the list. Kenny, Bow Kenny Brower from Duke has yet to be selected, which I think is kind of interesting. He was one of those guys that people thought a little bit more highly of. Ethan Rao of Rutgers is still out there. John Gephardt of Maryland. Wilson Stevenson. What other polls are still out there? Tyler Carpenter of Duke. B.J. Ferrer, 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 B.J. Ferrer, that's a fun name. 
Cam wires, a lot of, I think that's all the D-poles. Yeah, interesting. 06 Virginia, oh gosh, I loved 06 Virginia. So 06 Virginia was at a different time of life than 22 MD. So we're talking about basically the best college lacrosse teams. 06 Virginia was stacked and outstanding. 22 Maryland, as much as I don't want to admit, 2022 Maryland was insane. They were absolutely insane. I think they beat everyone. I think, I think that is pretty strong candidate for the best team ever. 06 Virginia was, was good. That was fun team to watch, but I just don't think it's them. Whoa, we're going to go cannons on the clock. Pick is in. Oh, wait, Redwoods. What, what just happened? And the Redwoods select. Did they pick Cole, Zach? Cole of St. Joseph's. Okay, TD Erland, I like this pick. I like this pick because, as I mentioned before, I think it's time for the two-handed face-off monsters. Zach Cole is a great value at this point. Some people thought he was much better than where we are currently at right now, which at the 26th pick, we are looking at... Oh, gosh. What did I just do? I just clicked something. That, I, that took me way out there. We are in round four, the last pick... For the Redwoods, Zach Cole, I like that pick. We are in the fourth round for a dude that arguably could have went in the second round. That is a fantastic pick from the Redwoods. I'm back on. Good for you. Good for you, Nat St. Laurent. Uh, Kark doesn't seem to be, uh, based upon his face, his facial expressions I don't, I don't think look good. But yeah, I agree, Ty. I think that's a great pickup. It's a it's a best available kind of situation at that point. And, you know, T.D. Erland struggled a little bit last year at times. So it makes a lot of sense to try to pick a guy that you're like, you know what? If, if T.D.'s struggling, get out there, Zach. Go do your thing. Arguably one of the better face-off guys. Most people, I think, had him at number two behind Sisselberger, but... If you're picking up the number two guy in any position in this class, you're probably doing something right. So that's not too bad. Yep. Two Fogo lineups, I think, make it just makes a lot of sense. Let's take the Woods off the clock, which means we've got the Atlas, not the Archers, the other A team. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving right now. We had this thing starting off so slow, it took almost an hour to get through the first round that we are now cruising. They're like trying to finish this thing at 9 p.m. It seems like they are moving fast. So Atlas on the clock. Rachel is up on the screen. Let's get back here. Atlas, they, what else can they do in this draft? I mean, five picks, come on, let's go. Pick is in. And the pick is Kyle Long from Maryland. If you're gonna just throw a wild fourth round pick, why not pick a guy from Maryland? Probably a pretty good school at lacrosse. You would tend to think. This year, interesting, not so much. But they are the four seed in the tournament. They have still won games and been very close in some really good games. Debatable whether they should have been that team. But finally, I see a name that's from Springfield, Pennsylvania. It's about time we get a Springfield PA guy. Kyle Long from Maryland headed over to Atlas. Let's get him in. Kyle Long. We are moving fast now. Coming into the end. Chrome is on the clock. Another team that's done interesting things tonight. So I remember Hanley. Then we had that weird Troy Henninger pick. Weird. Then we went Jack Myers on attack. I, I, it has been so long since I looked at the wrong camera over here, and I did it again. We had the Jack Myers pick, which was trying to be a makeup for the previous round, but pretty, pretty decent dude. What we haven't seen yet is really a true pole. So I'm guessing a true pole coming with this pick from Sarah Dachenko, and the pick is in. And I'm incorrect. We did it! D3 lives on! Let's go! Cross Ferreira! 
from Salisbury. Let's go, D3. Sorry, sorry, that was probably loud in the microphone. My apologies. I was just excited. Division three continues to live on in the PLL draft. Cross Ferreira from Greenville, Delaware. Here we go. Number 22 in the program. Number one on the entire Chrome team. Just you wait and see. Shout out D3 Love. Salisbury Cross Ferreira is showing up. Kevin, I don't remember the last guy's name. Who's the other guy that we need to see? Good for you, Chrome. Way to pick a guy that cares about life. Not that the other ones don't, but they probably do. But yes, Chrome, interesting selections tonight, let's be honest. I know I said the exact same thing. I think I graded them poorly on the last draft. Um, I might have been slightly wrong because I was like, Nick Turn, come on. He's going to be military commitment. Was Nalskis, is that really your number one pick in the draft? Yeah, should have went Chris Gray, which... Chris Gray had a pretty darn good year, too, but uh, it seemed to pan out for them pretty well last year. So uh, I was giving them all kinds of knocks, but as soon as you throw a D3 guy, yes, sir, Kevin, as soon as you see Green Steel's on board, we need to hashtag, that's it, I'm going to, I'm going to Twitter, D3 train right now, hashtag D3. We need to get hashtag D3 on Twitter trending right now. Rachel, don't you dare make that next pick. Don't you dare. I need to hashtag D3. Hashtag D3. There it is. Oh, good. There's a lizard on TV, so we're not having to worry about it. Hashtag D3 trending. Get it going. Get it started. Cross Ferreira, you are the man. Welcome to the PLL. You are our Max Wayne this year. Go out there. Make a name for yourself. Show the world D3 is up. I did put Cross in here, right? I did put him in here, right? I had to have, I had to have. I could not, right? I could not. D3, that's a weird post that just says D3 on Twitter, but you know what? We're gonna get it trending. We're gonna get it, we're gonna get it. D3 for life, good to see. I did not get a chance to play Salisbury, but when I was in college, <laughs> Salisbury was the team that literally won every single year. It was ridiculous. They just kept winning. Um, there was one year they did not win and I don't remember who it was that dethroned them. But yeah, it was just like D, if D3 was Salisbury or, or bust. That's just the way it was. But good to see Kevin. Who was the other dude? Who was the other dude? If I scroll up, can I even see it? It's, I think it's too far up there. It's too far up there. Who was our other dude we got to cheer for? A long pull out of RIT. So I did also play with a dude from RIT in high school. Edit the post? What do I need to edit it to? I don't know. I just said D3. It's just D3. We're just letting the world know. D3 is the best. Dan Aristi is killing it right now. Look at all those people he's got. Dan is hosting his own live right now on tic TikTok. On Twitter, he's got tons of people. Uh oh. Dan, stop talking. I'm sorry. I, I can't hear myself. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Oh, no. You know what I didn't even do? Ty, you'll understand this. I totally forgot all about uh, the Sixers being on tonight because of this game. I just got a text that said double-double in the first half for, for Toby. Go, Toby. Somebody give me an update. Mike Grace. Mike Grace. Thank you. Come on, Mike. Somebody give Mike some love. All right. They're telling you about notable dates. Basically, June 3rd. Season starts. What will be interesting this season is we got Worlds in the middle of the season. June, I don't remember the dates. Um, I think it's June. Maybe it's July. June. End of June. There are some dates in which uh, we will not be seeing some pro lacrosse players. Potentially. Potentially. There's a break in the schedule. We'll see what happens with Worlds happening at the same time. But we may see some players uh, take a moment for a break. Sixers are winning. Let's go, Ty. Hold on. The pick is in. The Archers select Cam Wires out of Loyola. Cam Wires, this is a poll that was listed on a, quite a few of these charts already. Good to see Cam Wires showing up, going from Loyola 
to the archers this again was a position of need if we pay attention to what we wrote before defensive depth is something they need here's a dude from ottawa ontario hopefully he's not a big fan of the ottawa hockey team i don't really know anything about them i just felt like saying that from the bench if you're still here tell me if ottawa is good 65 51 with nine minutes left thank you ty appreciate that Thank you, Ty. D3 heroes for life. Mike Grace is going to be coming in soon. So, yeah, defensive depth. Look, Archers, I think they checked off the boxes that they need to check. I just think they did. Holy cow. Sarah's back again. Pick is in for the whips. They are speeding through the end here. It looks like we got another pull. Elijah Gash. 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 Eliza Gash from Albany going to the whips. Again, this team is just old. Um, I can say that because I'm older than probably all of them. So Elijah Gash is a long pole from Albany going to the whips. They just need younger guys, bottom line. They, they just needed to get younger at every position they possibly could. Coming to you from South Lyon, Michigan. I will tell you what, what's been interesting is where these players are coming from. They're literally coming from everywhere. So kudos to the lacrosse world for just getting better at being awesome everywhere. So good to see. Good to see. Whips are off the clock. Chaos is on the clock. Hopefully, Braden, you are in bed right now because you should not be awake. From, from the bed, you're still here, my dog. Yo, still not great. Have the potential be better. They're essentially the Lions. Dude, I love the comparisons. The football comparisons resonate with me. Thank you very much. Lions, yeah, could be good. So Ottawa, okay. Okay, potential. Potential is there. I don't know if they were in the draft lottery. I'm not sure who was in the lottery. Um, all I pay attention to is Philly sports up and down the board. So... Uh, just tell me when I need to start paying attention to the Flyers again. I haven't had to for a few years. That's kind of all that I care about where I'm at at this point. Chaos is on the clock. We are the second to last pick. Do we have a Mr. Irrelevant in lacrosse? Should we make that a thing? Should we make the Water Dogs pick the Mr. Irrelevant of PLL picks? There's so many dudes that come in after the draft because... Uh, just kind of the unsigned free agents, the, just the, the dogs that are still out there. The guys like, Kevin, I'm, I'm screwing it up already. Mike Grace, Mike Grace. Come on, let's get Mike Grace. One of these last two picks. What do Chaos need? Let's remind ourselves. What does Chaos need? Chaos at this point, probably we, we, we went for some offensive firepower earlier. We got our Ty Kurtz. Um, I think we got a midfielder, didn't we? Maybe a long pole at this point? Did we get a long pole? Did we get a long pole? Chaos got Ty Kurtz. They got Nick Rowlett for faceoffs. They got Brian Minicus at attack. And they got Will Bowen at defense. That's right. Will Bowen slipped down to them. I kind of feel like we probably want to go another D. Well, actually, they need some offensive players. Get another offensive guy for me. Towers, get an offensive guy. Who's it going to be? This one's taking longer than some of the other ones have taken. So apparently Carcaterra and Ryan Boyle have really good takes because that's, that's my guess is it's really based upon the fact that they just want to talk a little bit longer. That's why we're not moving over quite yet. By the way, if you are still here and you have been here the whole time, like kudos to you. You are awesome. I really do appreciate you hanging out all night long. This has been a lot of fun. Hopefully, you've had a good time. I know it's not done yet, but we are almost there. But shout out to you. I do appreciate the support. I just love lacrosse and having fun with you all. Hopefully, you had fun too. But the pick is in for the chaos, and Sarah says... <laughs> Levi Anderson. St. Joe's Hawks. My favorite part about this moment right here, right now, if you are not watching the TV feed, they have zero highlight clips of Levi Anderson. This feels like Andy Towers being Andy Towers. They're looking around trying to figure out who Levi Anderson may be because they have no highlight clips geared up for homeboy at all. He must just be an absolute dog. Levi Anderson, if you were playing that game tonight that over 21 people can play, 
Uh, hopefully dog was the word that you were choosing because nonsense did not happen so much tonight. It would have been about the dogs. Shout out to all the dogs. Levi Anderson, St. Joe's. The way these guys are looking at each other, I feel like this was a dude that wasn't on anyone's charts. What did I say? Was he a midfielder? I don't even know. Levi Anderson. Grayson Saladay was the D short stick DMAD I was hoping to see from Virginia to get picked. I hope he gets invited to a camp because he's another dog. Um, Levi Anderson. Anderson. <laughs> I do not. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Shame on me. So, of course, Dan Aresia has the dude, Levi Anderson, in his, I would argue, seventh or so midfielder position in the Sergio Perkovic division, which means more of an offensive midfielder. So, Levi Anderson. And here we are, Mr. Irrelevant. Let's get him. The Water Dogs are on the clock, and the pick is in. The face-off man from Georgetown University, Mr. Irrelevant in the PLL draft with the 32nd pick is James Riley. James Riley is our very last pick of the PLL draft. I have sufficiently made this a long enough night to see multiple Pennsylvania dudes James being out of Berwyn, PA. James Riley face-off going to the Water Dogs. Was that the first time they selected a face-off guy? Because that was something that we kind of said going in. It would have been nice to see them get some water. They got Chris Fake, Alex Mazone, and a Thomas McConvey. Not a bad pick with their first pick. So this is the first time they're going face-off guy with Jake Withers out. They felt like maybe they don't need to prioritize a fogo and at that point they felt like everybody else had picked what they needed to pick i think this is the fourth or fifth fogo off the board there it is james riley wrapping up the 2023 pll draft thank you so much for joining me tonight if you're still here come on now well done well deserved the guys are at their desk looks like they're checking their phones they're tweeting to their families they did a great job tonight. Instant reaction, Atlas, are you kidding me? Holy cow, you got a really, really, really good team. And it probably the Redwoods next. Everyone else is last. So, yeah, there it is. Thank you so much for joining me on this live tonight. I hope you had fun. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. The voice is fading. It's disappearing. The kids are probably in bed. My wife is probably upset that I'm not upstairs yet helping put the kids to bed. So I've got to get running. But thank you. No, but seriously, thank you to you for joining me tonight. It encourages me to do more of these things. Leave a comment. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I want to make them for you. I just love lacrosse. I love sharing what I know about lacrosse. And hopefully it helps you just become a little bit better. And uh, yeah. Yeah, just enjoy the game as well. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Adios, you all.